So welcome to my episode on the best games of 2023. And I've got to say, these are just my picks. These are some of the games i played, you know, my wife has played, we've enjoyed together. I will ask you guys, what are some games that you've really enjoyed this year? What are some of the best games of 2023 for you guys? Let me know down below. It should be just another day in the office, right? Now, I've already made the video saying what my number one game of the year was, and that is Tears of the Kingdom. Check out that video. Check it. I go into full depth of why that game really stood out to me and was my favorite game of the year. But let's hold back here. The rest of the year was incredible. And I also want to say, I'm going to get to Starfield and Baldur's Gate. I will talk about those games in probably early January. How would you feel about helping me kill some evil bastard? But let's get to the games. One of my first games that I want to pick here to talk about is Resident Evil 4 The Remake. I played this on PS5 and I was completely taken back. I played the GameCube version many, many moons ago, and I hadn't played the game since, so I had kind of a certain memory of that game, how much I enjoyed it, but this game took it to a whole other level. And if I was gonna say something about this game, I would say this would be my number two pick. This almost could have been my game of the year. I enjoyed it that much. I like Resident Evil. I really love Capcom, what they're doing with these remakes, and they knocked it out of the park with this one. Copy that. It feels like a completely different game and I think they really nailed it. And especially even the DLC separate ways is something I only finished last week. It took me about five hours to get through with Ada Wong. That was a blast. I couldn't believe how good that was. And I'm like, I want more. Give me more remakes. I want Code Veronica. Anything you got Capcom, I will take Resident Evil wise. I'll let myself out. Now I said Tears of the Kingdom was my number one game of the year and if there was a number two it would be Resident Evil 4 the remake and guess what number three would be? It would be this game right now and that is Armored Core 6. This game blew my mind and I used to play the old Armored Core games back in the day but I kind of got off the series over time and I didn't play all the rest of them. I played the original ones on the PS1, really enjoyed that with the link cable back in the day. But yeah, I hadn't kind of revisited uh, Armored Core in many, many years. So to get back into it, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe how amazing this game is and how addicting it is and how frustratingly hard it is. But you know what? That was part of the fun. I'd be stuck in a boss for a week. I would be, I, I don't mind saying that, but I kept coming back and I would power my way through and I'd finally be that boss and I felt like a million dollars and I just, for me personally in general, I love mech games and I think Armored Core 6 is my favorite mech game of all time. I even went online and did the online modes and that's something that I don't do all the time with a lot of games. But I was like, you know what? I want to do this and I went and played with some friends of mine. We had a great time. This game was the complete package, building up your mechs, sizing them up the way you want, putting on the weapons you want. I loved it and I loved leveling up, fighting in the arena, getting more money. You can tell I'm going off on this game. Armored Core 6 is incredible. I highly recommend it, but there is a learning curve and you will enjoy learning it. Now, in the beginning of the year, I got super addicted to a game that I thought I was going to enjoy, but I got really, really addicted to it. And that is Fire Emblem Engage, a great strategy game by Nintendo. I've always liked the Fire Emblem games, but this game quickly moved to the top of my list of my all-time favorite Fire Emblem games. There's this, Path of Radiance, but I gotta tell you, I got so addicted to building up my characters, exploring the world, and enjoying the storyline to that lesser extent because the storyline isn't absolutely robust, but it's the gameplay that saves this game, and it's there in truckloads. I love Fire Emblem Engage. I highly recommend it, even if you don't like strategy games. I'm recommending it to my wife. I'm like, you gotta try this game out. Emblem Engage! Now, speaking of my wife, we both played a little game this year called Sea of Stars. This had a little bit of hype behind it, and we were like, okay, you know what, a brand new RPG, pixelated, what could go wrong? Guess what, nothing went wrong. This game absolutely nailed it. Had a really fun little battle system, beautiful overworld, beautiful pixelated graphics, great characters, a lot of humor within the game, and I'm not gonna, no spoilers, 
but a few heartaching moments as well are in this game that we did not expect. And we really like this game. I know this game's looked at as an indie game, I get that, but there's so much heart that this game feels like a triple A pixelated adventure that's gone through the roof. And I gotta recommend this game to any RPG fans out there. You will not be disappointed. This is in the world of Chrono Trigger. They were inspired by that game and they really got it really right. <laughs> Okay, I'm representing here with, with the t-shirts because I really love this game. And that was Street Fighter VI. And I gotta be honest with you, I was playing Street Fighter V and I was like, I just wasn't feeling it at times. Yes, the game got way better later on, but I kind of burnt out on the game. And I was like, okay, Street Fighter VI is coming out. I'll, I'll give it a shot. I was completely won over. I love the one player mode, exploring the world. I picked a character like, that looked like Hagger, going around, owning the city, fighting and leveling up like an RPG. I was like, oh my God, I got a Street Fighter RPG, but yet I could go online and get my ass completely handed to me as well with a robust online mode, which they had in this game tenfold. And there's so much going on here. I love the new characters. They're really, really great. The graphics are incredible, but the gameplay, this is where Street Fighter VI really blew me away. I picked up the game and in five minutes, I was like, okay, I get it. But yet, it's gonna take me a long time to be a master. And I don't know if I'll ever be a master uh, with this, like I was in the past Street Fighter games, but I'm enjoying the experience and I'm loving Street Fighter VI. <laughs> And another game that really blew me away this year was Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. And I've said that I don't mind superhero games, but I'm not crazy for them. Spider-Man 2, man, the visuals, the story, the characters, the action, this game does not stop. Right from the beginning to the end, it also has an emotional story all the way through it. I had to mention Spider-Man 2. This game was truly amazing. <laughs> Now, one of the biggest RPGs of the year got released, and that is Final Fantasy 16. And yes, I'm putting it on the list because it delivers. It does deliver. There's a lot of people that were disappointed by the game, a lot of people that love the game. This game was very divisive. And what did I find myself? Right in the middle. I really like this. I actually think this is a very solid RPG. I love the combat, the action combat like Devil May Cry. Really beautiful stuff. The graphics, again, were beautiful stuff as well. And the characters were interesting. Story was a little bit dry, needed a little bit, little bit more humor. But what we had here was a very solid RPG that I don't think you can go wrong with. And I gotta mention a couple of games my wife was playing. She loved these games so much. And that is Diablo 4. I never saw my wife on an evening after this game was released. She was playing it with her friends, leveling up, fighting wave after wave of enemies, hordes of enemies. You know, it's the same thing over and over in the game, but it's beautiful. And I go in and sit down and just watch for like a good hour at a time and go, this game is gorgeous. I, I became jealous. I'm like, I want to play this game as well. So I think I'm going to get into that game during the Christmas break as well, if I can squeeze that in. It looks so good, but she really loved Diablo 4. Choose wisely. And her number one game of the year for her was Hogwarts Legacy. Now, as I said, Kim is a huge Harry Potter fanatic. I am somebody who watched the first movie and I, I saw bits of the other movies and I thought it was interesting, but not particularly my thing, but Kim fell in love. And she even said it was her favorite RPG of all time in that list that we just did for her. And so it was really magical watching Kim enjoy this game so much. And she said that it brought her back to being a kid again. And for me, I'd walk in the room and I thought it was a very magical game. And I really love the world building and all of that. And definitely up there as one of the games of the year. Now back to Nintendo, they released a little Mario game this year called Mario Wonder. And you know what happened? It won everybody over. Everybody absolutely loved this game. They really did. Some people are saying it's the best Mario game ever made. I wouldn't go that far, but this game is charming, it's beautiful, it's fun, so many levels, a little bit of challenge. It's not too bad for a seasoned veteran of Mario, but you'll have a good time there. Brand new transformations. I love transforming into the elephant. I can't believe it. Whoa, he's out. 
I didn't think it was a really good design choice for a Mario character to go into a in, into an elephant, but it won me over. It worked very well, and the game overall won me over. And I had had so many good memories sitting on the couch, you know, on kind of a cold day with a blanket around me, having some cookies and tea. I know I've mentioned that. I'm playing that game. It's a very very comfort zone style of game. <laughs> And I also have to mention Super Mario RPG. What a delight. Something from my past from like 27 years ago made a return with a remake of the game. And I think they did a really good job taking that original overhead graphics and turning it into 3D the way they did. The original looked like a claymation. This brand new one took that design and made it absolutely stunning looking. And just brought back the combat that we really enjoyed and also brought us a Mario game in an RPG. And it's so amazing for me that a game from like 27 years ago in my past gets to be remade and brought to a brand new audience to try it out for the very first time. A true classic. And I only played the first three hours of this game and I loved it and that was Pikmin 4. The charm on this game as well, I mean, you can say this with a lot of Nintendo games, charm, and it really did. I, like the first Pikmin game for me is my favorite because it's nostalgic, it was the first game. I hadn't experienced a game like that. And Pikmin 4 is the absolute extension and them building on that, you know, with your dog character helping you out, uh, you know, with the Pikmin and all of that, opening up different areas. From what I played, I adored it, and I really want to get back to more Pikmin 4. <laughs> Now, a couple of remakes, remasters, I have to mention because I really had fun with these games this year. Metroid Prime Remastered. Yes, I love the GameCube game and the remastering they did brought a small tear to my face. I had a big smile playing that game, revisiting it, hearing the music again, and seeing the updated visuals, which I think they did an amazing job on. For anybody who hasn't played the original Metroid Prime, Go and play this game. Huge world to explore. You will be lost in it for a long time and having a great amount of fun doing it. Now, I can't believe I'm putting this on my list, but there was many late nights that I was playing Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot for the Nintendo Switch. They brought it back out again and remade it. I gotta say, I love the updated graphics. I think they did a really beautiful job. I love the opening anime cutscene. I love the brand new profile pics. I love the updated visuals. And the gameplay is still there. I'm a bit of a strategy guy, and I'm telling you, Advance Wars made me become that guy. There's a lot of games I could relate that to. War Song, Military Madness, definitely Advance Wars. Beautiful to revisit that game. And a couple of little RPGs I have to mention. My wife has just finished this game and she really enjoyed it. And that is Star Ocean, the second story R. Yeah, this game kind of came out of nowhere. It's, a, it's gonna be one of those ones that's gonna become a bit of a cult classic. It's a remake of a PS1 game. And yeah, it's a 2D pixelated graphics and 3D backgrounds at times. And beautiful profile pictures of all the characters. Great music as well. Really interesting story. And you know what? Again, this is one of those comfort zone RPGs that you can play through the Christmas time and really enjoy. It's a return to the 90s. And that's a kind of a cool thing. And I, this game kind of came out of nowhere. I believe it's gonna be a bit of a cult classic. It's under everybody's radar. I know they're all going for like Final Fantasy 16s this year and all those other games, but don't miss out on Star Ocean, the second story R. <laughs> And another game, it seems like a lifetime ago came out now, was Octopath Traveler 2. Great characters, great writing, great visuals. I love this game, I thought it was fantastic. So many RPGs this year that I can say I was not disappointed. I feel that we were spoiled, I really do. I think 2023 is a year where we all got spoiled so much. Stand back, Temenos. But I know every single year I always say, Oh my god, this year we got too many great games. This was too much this year. I'm being honest with you when I say this year was too much. It was way too much. I could hardly keep up, but I had a good time trying. Well done. But this year for me was overwhelming for video games. It was. I haven't 
ever dealt with a year like this, where it was just triple A, triple A, triple A coming out. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> trying to take them all along, trying to get through Final Fantasy 16. I did that in a week. Ah! I did Tears of the Kingdom in a week and a half, two weeks. I got through that game. Ah! I can't believe I did it. I just gunned the games to get through them. And still, I barely got through, but I had a great time. What a year. What are some of your favorite games of the year? Let me know down below. So anyways, guys, until next time.